happy Motivation Monday, guys. This is Nick Marillo again, trainer Nick here, uh, checking in with all you guys on uh, Monday, June 10th, uh, 2019. I, I don't know if any of you guys follow hockey. I'm, I'm a big playoff hockey guy, not a normal hockey, but great series going on between Boston and St. Louis. Uh, last night, they tied up the series, Boston did, so it's going to game seven in Boston on Wednesday. So I'm excited about that. I don't know if any of you else saw that, but that was great. Um, so for the quote of the week, we got a quote from Beverly Sills this week. It says, you may be disappointed if you fail, but you are doomed if you don't try, right? And that's kind of that fear in our own heads, right? Oftentimes we allow that fear in our own head to creep in. Uh, and, and so we just don't even try it because we don't want to fail. And you've already lost, right? So uh, keep that in mind, guys. So Motivation Monday today, guys. This week, we are going to cover, you know, a couple tips of the week for you guys. The normal sales, shout outs, everything that we go over. This week, I'm going to present to you guys phone etiquette. It's um, one of my personal favorites. A lot of times, people forget about those small things on phone calls that go a long way to make a difference. Even some of these tips can be used when you guys are calling companies customer service, right? And you you might be a little upset or you might be a little frustrated. And these are just different tips, different things that you can use on the phone to really get a better response from people in general. And then I uh, will go over the survey at the end, everything like that uh, for you guys. So excited this Monday, guys, to get started this week with you. Hope you're excited uh, for this. It's it's beautiful here in Southern California, uh, where I'm at right now. Uh, summer is almost here, and it's just wonderful today. So hope you guys are having a great week as well. So we're going to get on to tips of the week. Uh, the first tip is the AHCP lead portal, guys. Uh, so if you guys are not already in this, get signed up. You can call 877-228-8773 to get set up here. Guys, this is a great thing that's provided for you. Um, it's eliminating those bogus leads. You know, the lead portal is evaluating over 50 data points in split second timing before it's passed you. This is filtering out those bad leads, you know, which is really going to help you maximize your return on investment. So check that out. They're looking at stuff like your the leads age, origin, uh, consumer's behavior during the lead, right? Did they submit a ton of requests, just one? Uh, the duration of lead, how long did the customer spend on that form completing the lead, everything like that. So there's a lot of factors that go into this. These are good quality leads, guys. So if you're not already signed up there, uh, you can get set up with 877-228-8773. Check that out. Kind of right in line with that. Uh, there's actually a, a promotion that's been being pushed to the PNC side of things. And it's this refer.healthcompare.com slash NGIC. And it's a site where uh, we're letting people sign up to submit referrals under our referral platform. You can see the, they got Medicare referrals and under 65 referrals. So you guys can also use this as well. If there's some Medicare referrals that you want to get paid for uh, that you're not submitting on, you don't know where to, to, to refer them to, you guys can get paid up to $100 per submitted application here. But the reason I also show you this is we are pushing this to the PNC side. These are some of those good quality leads that we're sending through, right? So um, just, just look out for this. Um, again, that's refer.healthcompare.com slash NGIC. All right, guys. So for the sales leaders of the weeks, so the, and the kudos, you know, the, the big things are for short-term medical this week. It's been NatGen and UHC heavy as usual, right? Uh, fixed indemnity, NatGen's coming in big. Accident, we have plan enhancer, obviously not Jen, and then VBA is coming in on that list now. And then critical illness is CBL, Colorado Banker Life. And then dental, <coughs> excuse me, and then dental this week was Emeritus. All right, and then the short-term leaders this week, Andrew stayed at the top at number one. We actually have a couple new names here. We got Jacob Gordon and Ashley Rika coming in at two and three. So congrats to you guys for making that list uh, for the limited medical we had katya and then stacy on the list as well and then accident cody stands strong there and then edgardo moreno made the list so congrats to all of our sales leaders great job guys i can continue getting out there selling this week 
Um, but great, 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 great job. So now guys, we're gonna jump into phone etiquette, those small things that can help you go a long way on your phone calls, right? So what is phone etiquette, right? Well, the simple thing, telephone etiquette means being respectful to the person you're talking with while showing consideration for the other person's limitations and allowing that person time to speak. Also for you, communicating clearly, right? So good, good phone etiquette's important because we can't see facial expressions and body language of the other person. They can't see us, right? We must compensate for that by choosing our words wisely. You gotta use more tone inflection to convey our message because we aren't face to face. Your voice should create a pleasant visual impression over the phone, right? Your customer might be daydreaming about you. What do you look like? Da, 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 in their head, make it pleasant, right? Make it something that, that they're gonna wanna deal with. So my first tip here, guys, is watch your mouth, right? Uh, so what I mean by that, guys, is always be mindful and respectful when on the phone, right? You never know what customer might be offended by something you say. So it's best just to use formal language. Okay, it's okay to throw in humor, all right? But appropriate humor. Never crack that joke that might be on the line, right? You gotta be very cautious of that, guys. A key difference between professional and personal phone calls is the language, right? It might be acceptable to use slang and swear words when talking on the phone with your friends, but don't mix that with business, guys. This is something that could easily cause you to lose a customer for life. So keep it professional, okay? And then the last thing here, guys, use your manners, right? Just like your mother told you, say your please and thank yous, your yes ma'ams, your yes sirs. Ask if you can put them on hold, right? All the simple little things that would go to make your mama proud, you know. All right, guys. Next is mind your tone, right? Guys, the number one thing here with minding your tone is to keep a cheerful tone. Hopefully you're getting that in my tone, right? That's a big thing when you're on the phone with people. You never know when a customer's having a bad day, right? Sometimes your voice, your bright, cheery tone on that phone can be the thing that they needed that day. Some days you're gonna encounter someone that might react a little rude to you. Again, you don't know what happened that day. Just stay cheerful. You might turn them around, okay? Along those same lines, guys, always be upbeat and friendly, right? Phone calls require very strong communication skills. The person on the other line can only judge based on your voice. They can't see you, right? They don't get to see your body language, even your smile. So you really have to convey that. The point's always to remain positive and friendly. You want this positive image to come across, even in the face of negativity from the customer, right? And then I'll kind of lead into the last one. Respond to negativity with optimism, guys. Take a moment to step into their shoes, your customer's shoes, and recognize why they might be so upset, right? Your optimistic outlook may be enough to turn a failing phone call around. Remind yourself that the thing your customer probably wanted to spend their afternoon on wasn't this phone call with you about health insurance, right? So make that phone call the best that it can be, and then maybe it might create a lifetime loyal customer for you, right? All right, guys, next tip is to speak clearly, okay? We need to make sure that our customers are hearing us and that from our end of the phone, it sounds like they're our only focus. So first with that, get to a quiet place, right? For many of your phone calls, if this is your first time meeting somebody over the phone and you're in a busy train station, maybe you're at a restaurant, all that side noise is picked up. Now your customer doesn't feel very important or respected, right? Try to get a place where only your voice is heard and it's heard clearly, right? Pro tip guys, invest in a headset. A lot of you, but both experienced and non-experienced brokers, a lot of people I know take notes during phone calls, especially during sales calls, right? Your, your fact finding. A hands-free device can be very helpful for this. 
It can also free you from distractions. Also, there is that sound benefit of making you sound a little bit clearer to your customers, okay? So that's a big one, guys. And last one here is to be aware of your volume. Make sure that your customer's hearing you clearly, right? You, you don't want to sound too quiet. But you want to sound confident. You want to go back to creating that mental image for your customer right through your voice. So don't sound shy and bashful. You also don't want to sound intimidating, right? You want to keep your volume and your tone friendly. You want to keep it at a welcoming level, right? So be aware of your volume. Be aware of your tone and where you're at, guys. And the last thing, guys, this is this is one of my favorites here is the power words, right? Power words are those emotional words, you know, it can be packed with persuasion in them, right? Power words work in everyday things, you know, your emails that you send out, social media posts, shoot, your resume if you can use these, right, right? And then they also work on your phone calls. Power words work exceptionally well on phone calls. And there's one right there, right? Exceptional. It's a great example of a power word. These are the fun adjectives that you're looking for when you're describing things, right? Like life-changing. That's one of my favorites, right? When I'm describing a restaurant to a friend, that burrito is life-changing. Oh, perfect. Not a problem, sir. Perfect. These numbers are staggering, right? Ah, oh, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Guys, and a lot of these words, you don't have to try to be over the top in how you're presenting it. Just saying the word is going to change your tone. That's one of the fun things about these power words is just saying the word packs some emotion behind it, right? When you say fabulous, you can't say fabulous and sound sad about it, right? That's fabulous. No, it still sounds a little, there's still a little edge to it, right? So that's one of the fun things with these power words. Find those words, guys. The list goes on with these words too. There's a ton of adjectives. This is just a small example. The point out here is be creative. Don't sound like every other sales guy calling. You know, you do have to be yourself, right? But use a few of these tips and tricks to help improve your overall phone etiquette. And this can turn your phone calls in that positive direction, guys, okay? So that's what I got for you this week. I, I really appreciate you listening. I hope you learned something here with the phone etiquette and everything. Uh, if you need to contact us, again, email training at ahcpsales.com. You could also call agency services at 877-228-8773. Super excited again, guys. Happy Motivation Monday. Go out there and kill it this week. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Take care.